Hello everyone. So now I will be talking about hand tools or manual tools. So what are hand tools? So basically from the word hand tools. So it uh, they are powered or operated by hands. And they are also classified according to their uses and purposes. First, we have the layout and measuring tools. So these tools are designed uh, to aid the process of taking measurements and uh, layouting of the measurements of a design. Also, these tools are used to mark materials for cutting or assembly. Under these tools, uh, we have the tape measure. So it is a long, thin piece of cloth, uh, plastic, or metal that is marked with uh, units of length and that is used for measuring things. Also, uh, tape measures have varying lengths from 3 meters to 50 meters. Uh, example of this are the push-pull rule and the surveyor's tape. Uh, another tools under the uh, measuring and layouting tools, we have the carpenter's squares. So this device consists of two straight edges set at right angles to each other. So this tool may be of various shapes such as L square, speed square, tri square, and the combination square. So the types of carpenters square we have the framing square, uh, the speed square, tri square, and combination square. First, the framing square. It is a flat steel square commonly used in carpentry. Another is the speed square. It is a Triangular shape tool used to mark perpendicular and angled lines. Next is the tri square. So it is a, a square whose legs. Another is the tri square. So it is a square whose legs are fixed at 90 degrees. So it serves as a guide for marking lines at right angles or to an edge or surface. Uh, as a scale for laying out work and as a tool for testing the straightness and or the squareness of edges, faces, and etc. Uh, the last uh, type of the carpenter squares is the combination square. So it is an adjustable carpenter's tool consisting of a steel rule which slides through an adjustable head. So it can be used as a tri square meter square, uh, level, marking gauge, plumb, and straight edge. Next. So another type of the uh, measuring uh, or layout thing tools is the bevel gauge. So it is a woodworker's square uh, with an adjustable arm that can be set to mark out an angle or to check the slope of a surface. Another tools under the uh, measuring and layouting tools is the or are the levels so this is or are devices used for determining or adjusting something to a horizontal surface so there are also type of levels first we have a spirit level it is a closed glass tube of circular cross section it is usually set in a device or instrument it is uh, nearly filled with wa water or liquid so that a bubble is formed and the centering of which is used to determine the true horizontal or vertical directions of a level. Uh, another type is the water hose level. So it is a transparent hose, a plastic hose of circular in section. It is also nearly filled with water but uh, usually slightly colored. Uh, it is used to determine the true horizontal direction only. So next is, is another uh, type of tool under the measuring and the layouting tool. It is a thumb bob. So it is usually a conical metal weight attached at the end of a plumb line. So plumb bobs are used to check the verticality or plumbness of a vertical member. Another tool uh, under the uh, measuring and layouting tool is the 
chalk line. So it is a chalk string used in the building trades to make a straight line on a surface. Uh, another is the scratch hole. So it is a pointed tool. It is used for marking surfaces or for punching small holes. Next is a marking gauge. So it is a carpenter's hand tool. Uh, it is used uh, for scribing a line parallel to an edge. So the gauge has a scribe on a rod whose distance, uh, whose distance is adjustable at the head and rides along the edge of the material. So uh, last type of the uh, measuring and layouting tool is uh, the meter box. So it is a device to use for guiding a hand saw at the proper angle in making a meter joint. So it is often a narrow wooden box. Uh, it is so. It is often a narrow wooden box having a bottom and two sides in which curves are cut. Uh, usually at ang angle of 45 degrees for guiding the saw. Another type of hand tools. We have the cutting tools. So these tools uh, are used for cutting materials. Yeah, from the word itself, cutting. So these tools are used for cutting materials to its desired shape and size. Uh, under this uh, cutting tools is the utility knife so it is a cutting tool having a sharp replace replaceable blade that can be retracted into a usually metal handle another is an axe so it is a tool with a bladed usually heavy head mounted crosswise on a handle so it is used for felling trees or chopping woods another is the hand saw hand saw it is a cutting tool having a thin uh, flat metal blade band or stiff plate with cutting teeth along the edge so there are types of uh, hand saw first we have the types of hand saw according to the blade so first we have the cross cut saw so it is a saw adapted by its filling and setting to cut across the grain of wood rather than with the grain. So another is the rip saw. So it is a saw uh, which uh, the teeth of which have a chisel like ripping action. So it is used for cutting wood in the direction of the grain. So next, uh, type of hand saw according to the design and use. So first we have a panel saw. So it is a small saw having closely set teeth. So it is used in cutting thin panels and the like. So another type is a back or meter saw. So it is a saw having a metal strip along its back to stiffen it. So it has many uh, small teeth for fine accurate sewing as four meters and next is the box so it is a saw consisting of a blade set in an h framed or h shaped frame used for cutting wood on a saw horse so another type is a bow saw so it is a saw having a narrow blade which is uh, held taut in a bowed frame next is a compass saw so it is a hand saw having a narrow blade uh, used to cut small intricate shapes or circles of small radius. So there are uh, types, subtypes of compass. So we have the keyhole saw and the lock saw. So a keyhole saw is a compass saw having uh, an especially narrow blade and fine teeth. Uh, next is the lock saw. It is a compass saw with a tapering flexible blade it is used for cutting the seats for locks in doors next type of hand saw according to the design and use is the fret saw so it is a fine tooth saw having a narrow blade which is held under tension so in a frame it is used to cut thin wood especially 
ornamental designs. Next is a uh, coping saw. It is a light, narrow bladed saw with fine teeth held in a U shaped tension frame. It is used for cutting small curves in wood. So, another type of cutting tools is the diamond tip or glass cutter. So, it is a tool which scores a line on a piece of glass. So, allowing the glass to be snapped along the line. Next is a tile cutter. So, it is a tool specifically designed for cutting ceramic tiles. Uh, although it can sometimes cut other materials such as glass, but yeah, they are uh, specifically designed to cut ceramics or ceramic tiles. So the cutting process has two stages. Uh, a thin blade, typically a cutting wheel, is drawn across the surface. So making a small straight score mark in the glaze. So then pressure is applied evenly on either side of this line to snap the tile along the line. So handheld and bench mounted versions are available. Uh, the last type of the cutting tools is the pipe cutter. So it is a hand tool comprising of a uh, com comprising a grasping device and three sharp edge wheels it is that are forced inward by screw pressure that cut into the pipe as the tool is rotated. So next, another type of hand tools. We have joining tools. So joining, so these tools are a set of tools used to connect two or more pieces of material or used to aid the connection of materials. So we have the type of joining tools. First, we have a hammer. So it is a tool consisting of a solid head. So usually of metal. It is a set crosswise on a handle and is used for driving nails, pounding, flattening materials, and etc. So there are also types of hammer. First is a claw hammer, so it is a carpenter's hammer with a flat striking face. The other end of the head is curved and divided into two claws for pulling nails. Another type is a ball pin hammer, so it is a hammer having a hemispherical pin. Uh, next is a cross pin hammer, it is a hammer having a wedge shaped pin. Another type is a brick hammer. So it is a steel tool, uh, one, one end of which has a flat square surface used, uh, used as a hammer. Uh, it is used for breaking bricks, uh, driving nails, and etc. The other end forms a chisel pin used for dressing bricks. Another type is a club or lamp hammer. So it, uh, in stone working, a short-handled, heavy hammer usually having a round or octagonal face. That is a clamp or lamp hammer. Next is a mallet. So, it is a short-handled wooden hammer used by carpenters, stone cutters, or etc. Uh, chiefly for driving another tool. Uh, just like as a chisel. The head may be uh, of soft material such as plastic. Next uh, is uh, the last type of hammer is the sledge hammer. So it is a large hammer having two faces. Uh, it weighs up to 100 pounds or 45 kilograms. Uh, grasp with both hands. So another type of journey tools is a screwdriver so it is a tool having a handle and a long shank uh, with a tapered wedge shaped tip which fits into the recess in the head of a screw it is used for driving a screw in place or removing it by turning the head of the screw 
So another joining tool is a wrench. So it is a hand tool consisting of a metal handle with a jaw at one end which is designed to fit the head of a bolt or nut or to grasp a pipe or rod so that it may be turned. So there are also types of wrenches. First is a box wrench. So it is a wrench usually double-ended. Uh, that has a closed socket which fits over the head of a bolt or nut. Next is uh, open wrench. It is a wrench having fixed open jaws on uh, one or both ends. Next is the combination wrench. So it is a wrench usually double ended that has a closed socket on one end while the other has open socket. Next is the socket wrench. So it is a box wrench having a recessed socket at the end of its shank which fits over a nut. So next is an Allen wrench. So it is a wrench for Allen head screws. So it is a steel bar hexagonal in shape which is bent to form a right angle. So next is a torque wrench. So it is a wrench that incorporates a gauge, so such as a dial that provides a numerical indication of the torque that has been applied to a shaft. So next is a T wrench. So it is a T-shaped wrench with a handle having a socket, uh, either fixed or either fixed or removable which fits over a nut or bolt head. Next is the adjustable wrench. So any one of several types of wrenches having one jaw fixed and the other adjustable set to the desired by means of a knurled screw. So another is a ratchet wrench. So it is a wrench in which torque is applied